All right, this is section 4.1, uh, more on linear functions and their graphs. Let's take a look first at a definition, a polynomial function, and this is um, uh, applies to part of this, not all of it. A polynomial function of degree n in the variable x can be represented by f of x equals a sub n x to the nth plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 x to the n minus 2 plus and so on plus a sub 2 x squared plus a sub 1 x to the first plus a sub 0. And notice what's happening is you have the highest uh, exponent at the beginning and then the exponents go down and down some more all the way until they get to 2, 1, and uh, actually this is exponent 0. x to the 0, remember, is 1. All right, and that's just the polynomial function. A, uh, n can be anything, by the way. n can be anything. Well, let's read on. Where each coefficient a sub i is a real number. That's the coefficient, a sub i, right, the number in front of the x. a sub n cannot be 0. That means the first uh, leading coefficient cannot be 0. And n is a non-negative integer, so n can be anything uh, greater than, uh, any integer greater than zero, right? So n could just be a, a, a greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, non-negative. So n could be zero. So f of x equals a sub zero without anything else could be considered a, um, a polynomial function. Notice the degree would be uh, zero, yeah? As long as it is not zero, right? So you couldn't have f of x equals zero, right? You, you could have f of x equals anything else, uh, without a, 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 an x, right? f of x equals ax plus b, that's a polynomial function, degree one. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that's a polynomial function, degree three. All right, um, let's go on. Uh, so remember, the leading coefficient is a sub n, right? That means when they're in order from the highest uh, exponent down to the lowest, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest uh, uh, x with the highest exponent. All right, so let's take a look at uh, what we want to be able to do with those. So uh, we're going to find the leading coefficient and degree of these polynomial functions. Okay, so let's do the first two, and then in class we'll do the other three. So the first one, f of x equals 4x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. I'm going to do the degree first because that's easy to find. It's the highest exponent. So the degree here is 3. The coefficient, leading coefficient, is just the uh, coefficient of the x term with the highest degree, so this would be 4. All right. Uh, for the second one, the degree is 4. That's the highest exponent I see there. And its coefficient, the leading coefficient, is negative 8. Okay? We'll finish the rest in class. Let's go on to absolute and local extrema. Now, those are two different types of... Uh, extrema means highest value or lowest value. Uh, notice we're going to look at absolute highest value and lowest value and local highest value and lowest value. So let C be in the domain of F. Notice that means C is a value of X if it's in the domain of F. Then F of C, that's a value of Y, F of C, is an absolute or global maximum if F of C, that value of Y, is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. That means it's greater than or equal to all other y's. f of c is an absolute or global minimum if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. So this says that that value of y for c is less than or equal to any other value of y that makes it an absolute or global minimum. Notice you can use either, either word, absolute or global. F of C is a local or relative maximum if F of C is greater or equal to F of X where X is near C. That means in a small area near C, remember C is an X value, is a value of X, so C is going to be on the X axis, yeah, or you'll see it on the X axis. Uh, and around that particular C, right, that means in a small area around that particular C, uh, it's the uh, highest point, relative maximum. Uh, what is higher than or equal to any other value of y. f of c is a local or relative minimum if f of c is less than or equal to f of x where x is near c. So again, it's saying that value of y is uh, lower than or the same as any other value of y. But notice it's where x is near c. So that means you're looking at a, a restricted space on the x-axis. Okay? All right. Uh, if you look at this picture, right, notice I can just have a little window that I'm looking at. That's what you're, that's what you're thinking about. Okay, so let's look at these. So, uh, oh, near C means C is in some open interval. C is not an endpoint. Okay, so, for, so that means when we're looking at uh, local or relative minimum or maximums, we cannot consider any value of C that is an endpoint. 
Okay, so C cannot be an endpoint for relative uh, or local uh, maximum or minimum. All right, so uh, use the graph of F to estimate a, uh, a local extrema and B absolute extrema. So local extrema, A, is local maximum and local minimum. We have two, two answers, okay? I'm going to use uh, max and min instead of maximum and minimum. So local, oh, yeah, local, max and local min, and then for part B, global or absolute, I'm going to call it global. Remember, we can use either word. So on the first one, we could have used relative, max or min. Uh, and for absolute, letter B, global, max or min, it's the same thing. Notice you have to be uh, remember both of them, global max and global min. Okay. And don't forget these are values of y. Notice f of c is a local uh, or relative maximum or minimum. So, so a local max or min is a value of y. Okay, now, uh, let's find, um, so, so what does that mean when x is near c? And so really what you're looking at is you're, you're restricting your, your, your view of the, of the graph to a small piece of the domain, uh, of the domain. Uh, but you don't actually have to do that. You don't actually have to cover up anything. What you have to look at is for local max, you have to look at hilltops. You see that right there? That's a hilltop. Yeah. What is the value of y? Zero. That's a local max. Is there any other hilltop anywhere on the graph? No. Local min, that's valleys. Yeah. There's a valley, right? Notice it's at the bottom of the valley that you're looking at the min, right? At this point, what is the value of y? Looks like a negative 5, right? Maybe 5 point something, right? And over here, it's actually the same value. So we don't need to say it twice. It's the same value. I'm going to say that's negative 5 point. Let me see. 5 would be about right here. So I'm going to say it's about a negative 5.3. Right, and notice if somebody said negative 5.2, I really cannot disagree with them, okay? All right. Uh, global max, even if somebody said negative 5, I think I don't know that I could disagree with them. I would say, well, you know, you could make a better guess, but can't disagree with them that it's right about there. All right, global max. So global means the highest point anywhere on the graph. Well, what this says is that these points keep going up forever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah? And so there is no uh, global max. So we say there is none. We do not say infinity, by the way. Notice. We say there is none. Global min means the lowest point on the graph. And if you notice, below negative 5.3, there are no points below that. So that is a global min, negative 5.3. Yeah? Oh, let me uh, zoom in because I think I'm too far out. It's hard to see. Okay? So there again, local max, remember, uh, is right here. Hilltop, right? Y equals zero. And local min valley or, or upside down hilltop. That's about a negative five point something. Global max, the highest point on the graph, there is none because this graph keeps going forever. Now you don't see any little arrows, but they're meant to be arrows there, okay? Right here. All right. Uh, and uh, global min, a negative 5.3. All right. Let's try number, uh, number two. Okay, so uh, same, same question, so therefore same type of answer. So for letter A, local max and local min. Notice, remember, max means maximum and min means minimum. And B, global or absolute max and global min. Notice they didn't specifically mention max or min, right? In the question, it says at local extrema and absolute extrema. We have to remember that there's two, top and bottom, max and min. All right, so local max, hilltops, there's one. What's the value of y? It's like a 2.5, maybe close to a 3. I'm going to go with 3. And local min down here, oh, 2.5, sorry. Sorry about that. It's between 2 and 3. It's not, I, I was thinking it's between 2 and 4. No, it's between 2 and 3, so I'm going to go with 2.4, 2.5. So 2.4, let's call it. Uh, and if you said 2.5, I could not disagree. All right, local min down here, negative 2.4. Any of you said 2 point, negative 2.3? I could not disagree with you. All right, global max, well, the highest point on the graph, and I can check going like this, reading up, 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 up. It, it keeps going, right? Global max, there is none. Don't forget, you cannot say infinity. 
that's none. And global min, well, this side keeps going down forever that way, so there is none. All right, so remember global is on the whole graph. Top point on the whole graph, none. Bottom point on the whole graph, none. All right, and we'll leave these other two uh, uh, in for class. All right, let's uh, start the next part. I don't know that we'll be able to finish on this first, first video. All right, so even function. So an even function is defined as follows. It is a function such that f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain. Uh, what does the graph look like? Well, the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. What is the